Yo, what is going on guys? It's Cryptic TMG back with a brand new video and today this time we're going to be doing something a little bit different. We're actually going to be talking about F1. Um, you guys know I love my motor racing. I've been watching F1 since like 1994. I think I've missed like three races in that time and um, you know, I, I mainly wanted to delve into what's going on in the F1 scene at the moment and um, you know, Red Bull won the Constructors Championship and pretty much know Max is going to win another championship and that's all well and good but i wanted to delve more into the the situation at mercedes between hamilton and george russell from my perspective which is probably different from what i've seen online because yo george russell's been getting absolutely hammered online and i'll be real i don't actually understand why i don't understand why he's getting hammered to the level that he is because you know um he's young he's hungry and he should he should be trying to take it to his teammate in my opinion but let's get stuck into the meat and bones of it cryptic tmg let's go so as we saw on the weekend guys um race at suzuka hamilton and russell pretty much went toe to toe and i've seen a lot of people sort of slagging russell off i've seen a lot of people saying russell's not a team player he's not playing the team game um he's selfish he's all these things under the sun and to, to me personally as someone you know obviously i do a lot of sim racing pretty much every sort of title i've raced i've been able to get towards the top tier of or, or whatever to a, a good level shall we say and for me personally competition means that you unfortunately you have to race everybody bro you can't you can't afford to take your foot off the gas in my opinion now if you look at the dynamics in f1 at the moment there is a lot of very talented young drivers george russell cannot afford you know to go to mercedes and play second fiddle and i'll tell you why in a little bit first let's look at let's look at lewis hamilton when lewis hamilton came into the sport he was teammates with alonso did, did hamilton back down no hamilton did what he had to do sometimes he had to put himself first sometimes he had to put himself before the team to establish himself as one of the guys who you see as a future potential team leader he had to do that to establish himself um you know he ignored team orders as well in his first season and he wasn't about to just lie down for alonso and i'm glad he didn't because since then even in the period where hamilton wasn't you know challenging for titles he was still thought of as one of the top guys he was still thought of as you know that's a potential guy that if we have a a, a front running car we're gonna go for this guy you know and that's what you have to do you have to establish yourself in the sport because in f1 in sport in general nothing is promised to you nothing is guaranteed you cannot guarantee your car is going to be the best mercedes cannot guarantee george russell a car they can't say listen hamilton's going to be around for another two three four years just wait bide your time and when he's gone it's going to be your time he can't afford to wait that out because what happens if mercedes never ever get back to be in the top team then he's just literally just gonna waste his career what just subsidizing for for lewis how many can't do that but for me from my experience the amount of time i've watched f1 there's only one dominating factor that makes you a number two driver and that is your raw speed you know if you are not fast enough you will naturally become a number two even if you know on a good day you you can match the team leader or whatever that's great on a good day but for the majority of the time if you are not fast enough you will never be anything but a number two we've seen that with Bottas we've seen that with Perez we've seen that with Barrichello even though you could say Barrichello had a contract that says he's not allowed to beat Michael the truth was he wasn't quick enough to anyway he was never really quick enough to beat Michael and just like Bottas was never really quick enough to beat Hamilton and Perez is never quick enough to beat Verstappen it just it is what it is um the difference with guys like Russell and guys like Rosberg is even though I personally think Hamilton is more talented than these guys and I think over season Hamilton is quicker than these guys they are too close to him to say no you have to be a number two it doesn't work it's never going to work you know and I'm just saying a lot of Hamilton fans over the years always used to say oh Hamilton he loves competition he wants competition and listen I'm going to keep it real. Every driver will say they want competition, but they always want competition that's beneath them. They always want someone who gives them a good race, but never beats them. 
Nobody wants competition that is quicker than you. Nobody wants competition where you're going into a race and you literally don't know if you can beat this guy. No one really wants that. That is probably the fakest narrative that's ever been put out in, in, in motor racing. Nobody really wants competition where they're getting beat. Have you, have you ever seen somebody comprehensively beaten and, you know, in the, in the same machinery and after the race, they have a smile on their face or look happy? No, because no one really wants that. No one wants to be the bridesmaid. No one wants to be getting spanked in the same car. And that's just is what it is what it is. That's why all these ultra competitive drivers, when they do get beat, they all look down. They all look depressed. They all look pissed because no one really wants that level of competition to the point where you're getting beat. And it's the same for Lewis. It's, it will be the same for Max. It will be the same for Leclerc. It's the same for all of them. All right. That whole narrative of, yeah, I, I want competition and I'm happy to raise competition. Everyone wants competition that is a little bit slower. And that, that is a fact. All right. <laughs> and that's probably why a lot of, you know, Hamilton fans at the moment are kind of getting angry at George Russell, because even though he maybe is a little bit slower, he is fast enough to still be in and around Hamilton. That means like, you know, certain seasons where Hamilton might only have to be 90% to beat Bottas. Now he can't afford to be 90% with Russell around because if he goes into a race at 90%, he will probably get out qualified and he'll probably get beaten. And that that's the difference with having a teammate like Russell. Now we've already seen this with, you know, we've seen this with Sebastian Vettel and Charles Leclerc. Remember Charles Leclerc signed for Ferrari as a number two, but he was too fast for them to keep him there. They couldn't, they, you cannot suppress somebody's talent, right? So. Charles Leclerc comes in and within a couple of races, we we already seen he's way too quick to be a number two, way too quick. And they, they couldn't keep him there. It was impossible. Okay. And it's, it's going to be the same with Russell as Hamilton gets older and older. Unfortunately, he is going to slightly slow down. That's a fact. People talk about Alonso still being at the highest level and yo, Alonso is very good. And, you know, for the most part, because he was, an elite driver he can fall off by a couple of percent and it doesn't matter against the majority of the grid but against the top guys it matters okay if if Hamilton falls off by one or two percent he will still beat the majority of the grid but against the very fastest guys you will see a difference and that's what I feel like we're seeing with Alonso now against the very fastest guys that little drop off is, is going to look a lot bigger than it actually is okay and um Russell, you know, he's going towards his prime. Hamilton's going to be slightly coming down. They're going to converge and you're going to get a battle. But you cannot just expect Russell to just sit there and just do nothing. Let, let's say, let's say for argument's sake, let's say Hamilton stays in the sport for four more years and Russell decides to, to agree to be a number two for four years, right? So in, in that four years... Let's say Hamilton was able to grab two more titles and Russell just plays a team game and, you know, it gets to the end of the four years, Hamilton retires, but Mercedes don't then build a car afterwards that is capable of challenging. Russell then spent all his best years and all his best opportunities agreeing to be a number two. Then then what happens? He, he may never get another shot at it again. You can't afford to just give up your, your dreams or for somebody else that's it doesn't make any sense why why are people expecting him to just do that i don't get it i've never got it and um for me if you are a driver who you don't really have aspirations not even aspirations what it does it comes down to a belief guys like perez and bottas they are broken they know deep down inside they cannot touch their teammate they know they can't beat their teammate pretty much at all Okay, and they know this deep down. So they're they're um when they get up in the morning, it's it's different. They don't have that aspiration because they don't really believe in it. Russell at this stage believes he is able to take it to Hamilton. And a lot of that might have come from last season where he, he outscored him or whatever, but he's got that belief at the moment. Now, if Hamilton goes on to break him down, then eventually he might fall into a number two. Who knows? But at this moment in time. He's got the belief of if I if I maximize my weekend, I can beat this guy. 
And to, to give credit to Rosberg, even though I believe Hamilton was still a better driver in 2016, he had that belief for that season and he pulled it off because he just consistently just scored scored points. That's what you have to do at the end of the day. Like I said, if if Russell was to agree to be in a number two and, you know, he never, ever got the opportunity again. And then let's say Aston Martin become the, the top team in the sport. Are the top guys at Aston Martin going to say, you know what, let's go and get George Russell? Or are they going to go for another driver like a Norris or a Leclerc? Because Russell's been a number two for four or five years. They're not going to look at Russell and think, yeah, this is the guy I need to lead the team. They're going to go and get someone who's been competing at the front, who's been challenging for wins, who's been the leader in their own team. And that's why you cannot afford to give up opportunities when you get in the space of F1. For instance, look at Bottas, right? Bottas was the perfect teammate. He, he followed team orders. He did what they told him to do. He let through Hamilton in the few times where he had to. He played the team game. Pretty much the perfect teammate. Where did that actually get Bottas? Where did it actually get him? Because he only got one year contracts. So they pretty much disrespect him by saying, yo, we don't know how long we're going to keep you. We're going to keep you as long as we're far enough ahead that where you finish doesn't matter. And then the moment... The moment they had the chance to upgrade on Bottas, they did it straight away. He got called a wingman on live TV. Like, literally disrespected this guy. And then, what team did he end up after he left Mercedes? Literally, at the back of the grid now. And you could say Bottas's best years in F1 were spent as a number two. You know, he was spent knowing that he's never getting a championship. Never. <laughs> and... Russell's not going for that. And if I was a driver, I wouldn't be going for that. Hamilton wouldn't have gone for that, and he didn't. You know what I mean? He came into the sport saying, listen, I've got to take it to this guy because, you know, I've got a good car right now. I need to maximize my opportunity. That, that's, that was his mentality when he came into F1. And because of how Hamilton came into F1, he was always a sought-after driver, and he was always a driver that people regarded as, you know, a, a front-runner. So even when stuff went wrong at McLaren... The top teams are looking at him saying, yeah, I'll get that guy. If you just let yourself become a number two, the top teams will regard you as a number two and you'll never be seen as, yo, we've got one seat. We need a team leader. I'm going to get this guy. No, it's not going to happen. That's why you didn't see Ferrari looking at Bottas. Aston Martin weren't looking at Bottas. McLaren weren't looking at... None of these top teams were looking at Bottas after he left Mercedes, man. So... I generally don't get what George Russell is supposed to supposed to do. Just sit down and just let Hamilton beat him. I mean, the tweets I've seen are crazy. The things people are saying, like he should just get out of Hamilton's way. Hamilton's so much better than him. Russell needs to understand that. It's like, what? Listen, the whole reason why there's even an argument in the first place is because Russell is fast enough to be in and around Hamilton pretty much every time these lot get in a race. And, you know, you have to you have to earn it. You have to, you know, you have to beat him. If Russell's in front of Hamilton, he's got no divine right to just jump out of the way, especially if Hamilton's not actually fighting for a championship. Listen, a lot of people are saying, but Hamilton's fighting for second in the championship. Last season, Hamilton said if he's not fighting for a title, he's not particularly bothered where he finishes. He just wants to improve the car. What's the difference this season? Now he's in front in the championship. All of a sudden... You know, Russell's supposed to subsidize his results. I didn't really see last season them saying to Hamilton, oh, let George through because that wasn't really happening. You know what I mean? Even though George was the head in the championship, it wasn't really happening. And there was no need for it to happen because they weren't literally fighting for a championship, bro. I understand if, say, Hamilton was actually fighting for the championship, he's way ahead in the championship. Yeah, then your teammate's supposed to back you up. I get that. But if you're fighting for what? For second? And I don't even really think he's fighting for second. You know what I mean, he's fighting to hold on to third. Let's be honest, right? And he, at the end of the day, who cares? Second, third, who cares? Realistically, nobody. You know, what what Russell did is he tried to provide another solution to finish fifth and sixth. It would have been a risky one. Um, but you can you should be allowed to ask that. You know, you should be allowed to say, can we can we try this? The team could agree or disagree. If they disagree, all right, cool. I tried. That's it. But to, to, you know, to have this notion towards Russell, like he's not even allowed to try. 
He shouldn't even try. He shouldn't be doing nothing apart from just letting him on through. That's crazy. Like, I don't understand where this whole mentality has come from with this, um, this fan base that it's like, they don't want anybody to challenge um, Lewis Hamilton's authority. It's, it's, it's insane. I don't think it should ever be like that. And a lot of people, I saw tweets where people were saying, yeah, but Schumacher had it. Bro, this isn't the Schumacher era. Have you seen the grid? This grid is way more talented than Schumacher's era was. There's too many good young drivers on the grid right now for you to be throwing away your career and throwing away future opportunities that you may or may not get because you're going to sit back and allow yourself to be a number two. I mean, as much as I think Leclerc is better than Science, Science is not sitting back and allowing himself to be a number two, even though I believe that um, Leclerc is more talented. But Science is not, not just going to sit there and take it. Know what I mean? You've got guys like Norris, you've got Piastri coming up. Right now, Piastri in his rookie season, he might be sitting down and taking it and... The truth is, the only reason why I believe Piastri plays the team game is because in the race, on race pace, Lando is just quicker. And that, that, can, that can be seen. Lando knows how to look after the tyres better. And at the moment, there's yet to be a race where Piastri, over the course of the race, is able to match Lando's pace. Which is why he gets out of the way, because he knows at the moment he's not there yet. That's a different argument. Russell knows he's at a point where he can still get to the end of the race in front of Lewis Hamilton on a good weekend. Piastri isn't there yet with Norris. He can out-qualify him. You know, he can be, he's been very good for a stint, but he's yet to have a, a good complete race where he's matched his teammates' pace. Russell has done that. So, you know, should he not warrant a little bit of respect? Like, it's crazy, man. Why do people just think that this guy should just lie down? I don't, I personally don't understand it. I don't really like to see it because I don't think anyone should lie down. As, as a man, as a competitor, who are you lying down for, bro? Who? Like, I don't want to see that at all. You know what I mean? You're watching, if you're watching boxing, if you're watching, if you're seeing, if you're seeing a one-sided boxing fight, you can't even take it serious. I don't take it seriously. I don't even like to see it. I don't, I hate to watch that when, you know a guy's just stood there just waiting to get knocked out because he's just trying to get the payday. Like, what is that? That's not competition. That's not nothing anyone wants to see. It's not impressive, you know? And Russell, for me, he's got to try and stand up to Hamilton. Your, your first Roma is your teammate. You know, people saying he's trying too hard to beat Lewis. So who is he supposed to try and beat? He's got to try and beat Lewis because he has to show his worth. Because he does he want to end up like Bottas? Bottas, for the main part, you know, he gave up trying to beat Lewis. How did that end for him? You know what I mean, he got replaced. And did did Mercedes look after Bottas after the fact? You know, did they get him in another Mercedes powered engine like a like a McLaren or like a Aston, like a, a team that's like in the midfield? Nope. This guy is at the back. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So you, you have to look at it for what it is. Every man has his own problems every person gets individual bills through their own door you know what i mean hamilton is not going to help russell out with his bills when 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 russell starts struggling for money that's my analogy of someone's f1 career when if if russell starts struggling in the future because after hamilton leaves the sport mercedes go downhill that hamilton can't help russell now what's he going to do to help him nothing you know what I mean? So what's Russell supposed to do? Give up the, the one or two opportunities he might have to, to do something noteworthy in the sport for somebody else? No, oh, this is it's a driver's championship. Everyone's individuals, bro. Sure, Mercedes might want second in the constructors, but what Russell was suggesting wasn't as if like, it wasn't nothing like out of this world crazy. You know, he's trying to suggest a, a way they can get the best results. He even said he would let him through on the last lap. So I, I don't get it right and for some reason this guy is just getting daggers for in my opinion doing exactly what he should do he should be trying his best to beat his teammate that's what he should be doing and if you don't want that then how can how can all these people say you know Hamilton thrives on competition if you literally showing every aspect of not wanting competition 
people saying oh he's not being a good teammate cool if, if you don't think he's been a good teammate okay cool but in my opinion at the, in the first stint of the race Hamilton made a couple of mistakes Russell was right on him you know if they wanted to maximize their maximize their finishing positions why why in that stint of the race why didn't Hamilton let Russell through he was struggling his tires he'd gone off the track his tires were dirty Russell was right behind him why didn't he let him through if they wanted to maximize the result for the team because it's not it's not really about drivers don't think like that they're 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 competitors you want to beat everybody especially your teammate so how did that end up Hamilton end up near enough well yeah pushed him off the track he even went off the track himself you know the the same Verstappen move that gets criticized all the time and what happens everyone praised it like great he's got his elbows out and it's like I always feel like the energy is not not the same for different drivers man if that had been Russell doing that to Hamilton it would have been a problem no one would have praised it no one would have said it was great he's got his elbows out everyone would have slammed him as he's selfish he's this and he's that and it's like yo at the end of the day what I noticed in the F1 community, no one keeps the same energy. No one, like the hypocrisy is just all over the place, man. It's it's with tons of different fan bases as well. It's not just the Hamilton fan base, it's the Max fan base. It's pretty much everyone. Like, to be honest, I'm cool because I feel like Ferrari over these over these last few years, we we we're humbled now. We we're, we're humbled now. We we know we, we ain't got it. So we're cool. We're not even we're not even talking too much. We're we're staying quiet. But from what I see from some of these other fan bases, it's like Yo, there's no, it's like there's no thought process. It's like a lot of these people, they're just, not in a bad way, but they're just casuals. Like, they don't understand, like, you can't just throw, uh, you know, you can't just throw results and races away or just let somebody beat you. It doesn't really make any sense. You, you have to try and be the best you can be. Otherwise, what are you doing in sport? What What is sport if you're not trying to be the best? I don't get it. Who, who's who's in sport just to finish second? That don't make no sense. No? But like that's, apparently, that's what people are expecting the driver to do. Now, as I said before, if it was a case where Russell was nowhere near Hamilton's pace, fine. But he's pretty close. You know, there's only a couple of attempts in it. As much as people want to act like, you know, Hamilton's way down the road. Like, this is, this is motor racing, bro. Like, for the most part there's only a few temps between most drivers anyway a lot of it comes down to consistency but on raw pace we've already seen when it comes to quality there is not a big difference between these guys at all you know i saw a lot of people slagging russell off from singapore and i'm thinking huh why didn't he why didn't he let lewis hamilton through why didn't he do this why it's like bro literally he'd been faster the whole weekend in fact he was faster for a good chunk of that race it was only towards the, the last stint where Hamilton showed his pace so put yourself in that position you've been faster the whole entire time and your teammate pulls up to you on the last stint of the race towards the end of the race and you're supposed to let him through what what kind of mentality as a driver do you have to have for that to even be an option in your mind bro do you think for one second if the shoe was on the other foot and Hamilton had been faster the whole weekend and Russell had caught up to him even if Russell came on the radio and said oh let me through do you think Hamilton would have let his teammate through for the good of the team not a chance in hell so all this good of the team stuff is all well and good but it's, it's not realistic half the time all right if, if someone's done a great job over the weekend you have to give it up if you were better in qualifying and that qualified them and start in front of him this wouldn't be an issue but because Russell is quick enough to, you know, put himself about, you know, it becomes an issue. But that's just what it is. That's competition, man. That's just how it goes at the end of the day. I don't expect Russell to lie down for anybody. I don't expect Hamilton to lie down for anybody. Because they're, you know, they're two, two top drivers. Hamilton, for me, is the better driver. Let me make that clear before people start trying to come here and start saying I'm hating on Hamilton. I believe Hamilton is a better driver than George Russell. I believe overall... He's got more he's got more ticks in his basket you know what i mean he's got he's got more ability overall but it doesn't mean that he can't get beat on a, on a bad weekend it doesn't mean if he does if he has a dip in a season it doesn't mean that russell couldn't outscore him for a season like sort of how jensen button did you know and at the end of the day that's why you have to take your chances because no one knows what's going to happen 
next year in F1. No one knows what's going to happen in three or four years' time. No one knows if Mercedes will ever get back to the front. So, you know, you have to you have to do what you have to do. Hamilton's not going to be here forever. So, George Russell has to carve out his own legacy in the sport. And, you know, Mercedes are probably not going to try and suppress that because it's for the, it's for the benefit of them in the future. Once, once Lewis is gone... They don't need a, a guy with a number two mentality leading that team. You know I mean, they need a guy who's confident. That's why I look at look at Hamilton in 2008. He had that confidence because of what he did to Alonso, what he was able to do and how he was able to compete against Alonso. Imagine if he came in and just sat behind Alonso every race and didn't challenge for wins and just let Alonso win everything. And that when you think about it, that was actually for a title. 2007 was that was for a title let's be real if if Hamilton came in and just backed up Alonso Alonso probably wins the championship in fact I'm pretty sure Alonso would have won the championship but he came in and he took points of Alonso it is what it is you know people can say that why why would you let a rookie come in and Alonso was the lead driver bro Hamilton was too fast we didn't want to suppress his talent and look at his career now <laughs> look at the belief Think about the belief that Hamilton must have took from coming in and competing on the same level and beating Alonso. That that you know that level of ability, that level of um, confidence, probably carried him a long way in his career. That would have let him know, yo, listen, I am one of the best on the grid, and I just showed it. I just beat the guy that beat Schumacher. You know what I mean? So from then. He's now got that confidence. Other teams look at this guy like they, they hold him in much higher esteem now. So, you know, you have to make a name for yourself, man. You can't afford to come in and just back down because you you may you may never recover from that. Never. I mean, Gasly was kind of rated, you know what I mean? Got smoked by, by Verstappen and his career, even though he's had good races, but his career and where he drives at has not recovered from that. Alex Albon, now at Williams, even though he's doing a great job, his career has not recovered from that. If you look at where all the people he was racing with um, in his junior career, if you look at them, where are they all now? They're all at top teams. They're all at top teams. Their, their careers after taking that beating from Verstappen has not recovered. Daniel Ricciardo's career has not recovered. And he went on to take even more beatings. You know what I mean? So you can't, you can't just allow someone to get the up on you because you know they're, they're more experienced or they've got more championships that doesn't mean anything you have to fight you have to fight and that's the way how it should be right and if people don't like competition then what are they in sport for that's just how it goes man lewis hamilton for a lot of his career he was the young hungry guy you know he was the guy coming into the team the new guy the rapid guy the hungry guy I wanted to do well. This is the first time in his career that he's had to face the young hungry guy. It happened to, I'm pretty sure it happened to like Prost, Senna coming in. It happened to Alonso with Lewis coming in. It happened to Vettel with Daniel Ricciardo and, and Leclerc coming in, you know, and now it's happening to Lewis. In the future, it's probably going to happen to Max unless he leaves before he gets old. So that's, that's what it is. It's sport. Even Lando Norris is kind of facing that now with Piastri. They've got the young, hungry guy coming in. Lando Norris is still young himself. He's getting this early in his career. You know what I mean? When you think about it, Lando Norris has been facing guys that are were either seen on his level or above him pretty much from the get-go. So it, it is what it is, man. You have to car carve out your, your, your legacy. I feel like Lando Norris has done that. Because for the most part, he's smoking everyone he's gone up against. So now Lando Norris is held in high esteem. If there's a seat to be had, Lando Norris is going to be one of the first people people look at because of what he's done. He didn't come in and think, oh, well, well I've got Ricardo as a teammate. He's more experienced than me. He's won races. Let me, just, let me just be his number two and back him up because he's got experience. He didn't do that. He smoked him. You know what I mean? And that's why he's held as one of those guys that if someone has a car and they need a top driver, he's one of the drivers, if they're available, that will be near the front of the queue. And that's just, it is what it is, man. But 
guys tell me what you think in the comment section it's a bit of a long one bit of a rant but i felt like i had to say it because what i've been seeing online in my opinion is over the top crazy and um i think people need to relax they need to lay off george he's trying to do his job like he should do and mercedes having two good drivers is only going to benefit them in points in the future anyway so script it tng guys tell me what you think and yeah peace